Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, humble human on a mission, here to help you both look and feel your best. In today's episode, we have a returning guest and friend who makes incredible organ-based meat seasoning products that I use all the time. You're going to love them as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about nutrition in this episode for the skin. Some of you may know I just recently wrote a paper for a UK medical journal on nutrition in the skin and how I personally believe that we should approach this. Let me tell you a little bit about James Berry. He's been in the industry for over 20 years in the culinary field and he started as a private chef cooking for celebrities such as Tom Cruise, Mariska Hagerty, George Clooney, Gerard Butler, Sean Puffy Combs, Barbra Streisand, and John Cusack. Most recently, James launched his first functional food product, Pluck, an organ-based seasoning. It's the first of its kind and is an incredibly easy and delicious way for people to get organ meats into their diet. James is also a published cookbook author, having co-authored the recipes in Margaret Floyd's book, Eat Naked, and co-founder of the follow-up cookbook, The Naked Foods Cookbook. I mean, come on, we all want to look great naked. So I love that. It's a little cheeky. He most recently co-authored recipes in Dr. Alejandro Junger's cookbook, Clean 7. James, thanks so much for being back on the show here. I'd love to kick things off with opening it up with the unlimited value question of what is radiance to you? Well, it's so good to see you again, Rachel. Uh, it's always great to see you. Um, you know, radiance to me is authenticity, actually. I, I, I love the human to human connection. Um, that just kind of authentic kind of just bear it all forward. And I know that, of course, with that can sometimes be vulnerability of process, which I think we're always in, you know, that, that kind of like what's working, what's not working and continually just striving towards what's working. I have yet to meet anyone that's just kind of found the, you know, the, um, the magic elixir that is constant forever and ever and defeats human nature. But, uh, that's, that's definitely, uh, my definition of radiance, which you embody, I would say. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say, James. And, you know, right back at you, every time I connect with you, James, you just have this brightness, you have this lightness, you have this warmth and kindness to you. Uh, For those of you tuning in, uh, James and I have known each other since about 2018. And we're part of this really incredible network of providers who are just looking to serve a larger population abroad to both look and feel our best. So let's get into why you created this Pluck product. And just uh, before you get into that, I want to share with everybody that I love to put your organ-based meat seasoning on everything, especially rice, actually, uh, because my main carbohydrate is white non-GMO rice because I do follow a little bit more of a carnivore diet. And we're going to talk a little bit about that too. But really, why did you create this product? What was missing in the marketplace? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the biggest thing that's missing is that we we're nutrient deficient society. I mean, and yet we're not calorie deficient. And that's such an important distinction, particularly here in the US. I mean, but I think you're seeing it all over and more and more um, where people are overweight and obese, like that's the average. And and so really, my mission is like, well, how can I support being healthy people and being healthy? But yet, as you mentioned to start, I've been in the business of 20 years. So I know I've watched trends come and go. I've watched people try one direction and then fail and then go right back to the comfort zone. So I really come at it from a place of like, what's truly sustainable? Because we can talk to our blue in the face about, you know, what's popular and what what so and so is currently doing. But I want to hear like, what's the person consistently doing for 10 years or more and what's truly moving their health needle consistently not just for a month or two and so for my money where that that lies is looking at the most nutrient dense foods and what are the ways that i can support someone's health without requiring a new habit without requiring that they step out of their comfort zones because when when life happens as we know a few years back when when life happens the unexpected happened, we, we default to our comfort zones. 
and a lot of health paradigms just fall by the wayside. So that's kind of the goal I had in mind when I was creating Pluck was how do I support our humanness with a truly healthy product? And so what that looked like was, uh, first of all, identifying, well, what is, what is the most nutrient dense food on the planet? And, and I, for, for my money, it's, it's, uh, organ meats hands down the whole animal. I mean, we, we focus so much on them, on the muscle meat and it's ironic because that's only about half the animal, you know, the muscle and the bone is about half the animal. The other half is what we call awful. And that would embody, you know, the tongue or the liver, the heart, the kidney, kind of some of the obvious stuff, but even basically everything but bone and muscle. So every other part of the animal, and we're just kind of wasting that we're throwing it into other industry, like pet food, we're putting it into zoo animal, like we're feeding other other things than actual humans. And then what are humans doing? Well, we're turning around, we're, we're funding a billion dollar supplement industry, because we're not getting everything we need from the foods we are eating. So then it became a kind of muscle meat or, or sorry, so organ meats, that's, that's what I chose to focus on. Then it was like, okay, well, how do I actually get people to eat it? Because we have some hurdles, we have the taste hurdle, we have the cooking knowledge hurdle. And then we have the sourcing hurdle. And I was like, okay, how do I do that? And I, and I fortunately was, I feel so grateful because it's so rare to find a new product that's not laboratory made these days. It, 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 there's an, there's kind of an essence of that. Everything's been done, but I was surprisingly the first person to combine freeze dried powdered organ meats with seasonings to create a shelf stable product that has five organs It has beef, liver, heart, kidney, spleen, and pancreas, all from hundred percent grass fed cows. And it's combined with organic spices and herbs. So we're, we're achieving all the hurdles. So we're making it taste good with the spices and herbs where, um, we're making it so you don't even need to know how to cook. You could just simply add it even to, to go food or anything, literally anything you want. I mean, I've had people just sprinkle it on pizza when they've ordered out, you know, so you can literally add it to anything. You can even add our pure brand to coffee. You know, if you're, if you're following Dave Asprey's, you know, uh, a bulletproof coffee concept, you know, you oh, I drink really danger coffee it. all the time. It's delightful. Right. And, yeah, and, and danger drink. coffee is a, is a concept of this, right? He's adding, you know, minerals to the coffee. And so in a sense, what we're doing is we're just saying, well, just, just, add organ meats to everything you cook or make. And now you're getting those micronutrients every time you eat. And what I love about this that I didn't really know when I created Pluck, but I've learned since then is that it, it truly is no, there's no new habit. It's like, we already season our food. You're going to salt your food in some way. And all we're saying is like, look, just replace whatever you're using with Pluck. And now you are getting something that you were not previously. Yeah, I think that's great. You touched on something really key, nutrient deficiency. And this is truly what I highlighted in my my medical article that I wrote, because a lot of autoimmune diseases and other things, they typically stem from a nutrient deficiency. And what does the body try and do? It tries to compensate. You also mentioned the pandemic. And actually, when I look at nationwide data here in Canada in 2019, we saw deaths of unknown cause doubling. And that's autoimmune diseases or something that was unable to be diagnosed before someone passed away. And then actually in 2022, we saw that statistic double again. So this deficiency situation is really key. And I love that you sort of bridge the gap between nutrition and seasoning, which is great. And I've been told I'm the first to bridge the gap between beauty and biohacking, which is kind of cool. And I also love what you said about what's popular. We don't want to do what's popular. Yes, I mentioned I do kind of like the carnivore diet, really high protein, a lot of meat with some rice, and I just feel incredible. So what do you notice in individuals? Because you talk with, you know, you're on lots of different shows. What do you notice between those who say are more vegetarian based and those who eat, so say, for example, I'm 130 pounds, I eat about 130 grams of protein a day. What do you see in the mental clarity? What do you see in their body composition? What do you see in their energy? I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, I've, this is, 
I mean, here's the here's the reality: is in 20 years of working with health health practitioners and as a chef, I worked with doctors, I worked with nutritionists, dietitians, uh, trainers, you named it. Um, I was kind of like the how guy. So someone would get assessed by their the people I just mentioned. They would get told why something's going on. They would get told what it is, and inevitably it would be the assessment would include like, okay, you can't do most of the things you're currently doing or the most of the things you're familiar with doing. And so then the person would say, well, how do I do this? Like, I don't know how to eat without eating the, you know, dot, 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 dot. And so they would bring in me, I was the how guy. Cause then I could come in take the list that they weren't that of the foods that they were supposed to eat and support that client in not feeling deprived, kind of redefining how, what food is and how to, how to change the, their kitchen and, and, and really kind of what they allow into their, their body. And so in my 20 years, I have personally never seen a vegan or vegetarian diet work well. I have historically seen it be a detoxifying diet. So it absolutely has its place. I think that, that you can, like when I, um, when I did a, like a juice fast, for example, at one point I did, I, I, kind of gradually went into a juice fast and then to a point where I was completely fasting, like almost like a water fast and then gradually went out and it was just a seven day, but it was, I mean, it was amazing. Cause what do you smell coming out of your skin? You, you smell, you know, it smells metallic because the metal, you know, there's, there's things that are coming out of your body that need to go out. So I do believe detoxification there's that being vegan vegetarian can support just like what you're experiencing, which is so can just being carnivore, because ultimately what we're talking about is per, most people, not necessarily, but most people are moving away from standard American diet and they're removing all these ultra processed foods. And then they're going, they're eating, they're either eating more vegetables, which if they're going vegan or vegetarian, or they're eliminating all these other kind of potential hazardous foods and they're just eating meat. But either way, it's really kind of an elimination diet, either side of the pendulum, right? And so I find that most people are going to benefit from all of it for a short period of time. Now, the question is, is how, how long will your body be good on any of it, right? And I think that's an individual question. I can't, I can't answer that for anyone, um, mostly because I truly do believe that we have to have the dignity of our dietary process. I, I can't even tell you how many people I have watched go vegan and vegetarian gain a lot of weight because they're eating so many carbs and, and for years fight it, you know, for years, not listen to the one person in their lives that will never lie ever. Like there's literally one person in your life that will never, ever lie to you. And it's your, your body. So no matter what we decide dietary wise, you can go wherever you want, but you got to listen to your body's feedback mm -hmm. of that dietary choice because how, and then the question becomes, well, what is the feedback? Well, I mean, we can discuss it right here. It might be skin eruptions, you know, rashes, anything like that. It might be uh, issues with sleep. It might be foggy brain. It might be digestive issues. You PMS not, symptoms, PMS, you know, severe cramps. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many ways that the body alarm, you know, alerts you to, Hey, what, what you're doing is not working and we're not listening. And so that's ultimately the message I'm I've learned in my 20 years is like, have the dignity of your process, but please just listen to your body. And don't, mm -hmm. don't just be on this kind of ethics or this kind of like, you know, this kind of brain um, soapbox of like, well, I believe this is how it's going to be, but yet your body's screaming. It's like your body doesn't believe, doesn't judge. Your body does not hold this ethical position. It just tells you it's either working or it isn't working. I know. Are it's those not, bears that, that eat just a ton of meat and the cougars that eat all meat, are they, are they bad bears and cougars because they eat meat? I'm so glad you brought this up because I've, I've seen this become more popular. It's, it's poor etiquette to talk about the political landscape, but I have also seen this shift too. And people have certain political views 
they tend to go more towards being vegan and vegetarian. And then I was actually just at a shop the other day and I was at an ice cream parlor. It's a, it's a local, you know, they have really great uh, dairy products and sure it's a little bit of ice cream, but every now and again, you know, 90 to 99% I'm living really good, but it was a hot day and I worked out, played some pickleball and just felt like I wanted like a very small treat and they had vegan options as well. And I was actually observing the women who were ordering the vegan ice cream and they had no muscle tone no muscle tone, they were puffy, and their body composition was was not great. And the, you mentioned, uh, you know, salads and greens and things like that. You know, how should we eat? I think we should test instead of guess. So I do have um, some of those items available on my biohacking page, as well as the E-Plex seasoning over at the school of radiance.com slash biohacking. We need to test instead of guess how we're eating. And I'll be the first to tell you that a number of years ago, I would it would take me like 45 minutes to eat this beautiful salad I made for lunch and then also for dinner. But then I was hungry 30 minutes afterwards. And I just felt like I was constantly eating. I did go plant-based actually for a year. And then I went back to the gym to lift some weights and I was so incredibly weak. The other things that I see in individuals who aren't getting enough meat-based products in their diet is their skin quality. They'll be 40 and they just have so much thinning to the skin loss of collagen and their aging actually occurs um, more rapidly. Some vegans and vegetarians, they, some vegetarians do have eggs at least, but I would just, if you're kind of like stuck in this moral dilemma or you just don't like the taste of meat, for example, you could just start to get the organ based benefits from eat plox, say on your rice with whatever you're, with whatever you're eating. So I, I did. It's so true. Yeah, the yeah, muscle loss so is true. massive. So, but it's so true though what you're saying because I always tell people they're like, oh, but that's a meat-based product. I'm like, actually, it's ideal for people that are vegan and vegetarians that are transitioning to trying to eat, you know, more meat. Because what's what's the hurdle? It's it's usually the texture. It's usually the smell of cooking it in your house, and you don't have any of that with pluck. Um, so yeah, wholeheartedly agree. And then also to your point, what, what, I, what I really feel we're talking about when we talk about diet is we're, we're ultimately talking about like supports like, and it's a very ancestral term. It's something that was, at least we know was, was a part of Native American culture. But the, the idea is, is that the part of the animal that you're eating is gonna support that part in you. So if you're eating muscle, it's going to support your muscles. If you're eating the skin, it's going to support your skin. If you're eating the liver, it's going to support your liver. And, and, and why that is, is because each of these parts of the animal have the minerals and nutrients that are necessary for that part of the animal to operate, to flourish, to radiate, <laughs> you know? So it's like, that's ultimately what you're getting when you eat those parts. The problem I have is that you know, there's a lot of contradictions going on in, in life in general. So, so the one I hear the most is like, oh, well, eating animals is bad for the planet. Okay. So that's one I hear a lot. And then the other one is, is like, oh, I don't want to, if I eat vegan because I don't want anything to, I don't want to kill anything. So, so let's quickly address those. So one is for us to eat, something's got to die. And you may think that you're not killing anything, but you can, you just need to talk to a farmer, any farmer that plows a, a field, a crop will tell you that there's dough hiding in those fields. There's rabbits, there's ground squirrels, there's tons of insects, there's mice, there's all this plethora of, of, uh, of ecosystem that, that is part of those fields. And these are massive fields. And so when they plow those, it's carnage. In the face of the farmers, when I ask them about it, it's truly, it's like they're watching a horror movie. It's, it's, it's vulnerable and it's hard for them to talk about because it's so, there's so much death in plowing a field. So then we flip to the other side. It's like, okay, we're going to kill a cow or, or, or a chicken or whatever the species is, a fish, whatever it is that we're focusing on, right? But let's, if we're focusing on a cow, one of the most green things we can do in my judgment is eat the whole animal because when we're going to kill the cow, no matter what, right? So if we're just killing the cow for the muscle, then 
as I mentioned earlier, about 50% of that cow is just kind of going to other industry. It's, it's wasted on humans. It's like we should be eating as much of that cow as possible because that's going to not only honor that animal's life, but also it's going to give us these nutrients that we're not getting otherwise. And, and, and then complete potentially make it so that we don't have to spend tons of money on supplements, right? So it's, it's an amazing thing when we just think of a holistic viewpoint. And then, of course, you can go deeper and like, well, first of all, when we raise animals properly, it is actually very pro planet because animals can graze in areas that really nothing else can graze and or can use that land for. I mean, animals can graze on, on land that is completely non agricultural, like they, they can't technically grow vegetables, but they can grow grasses, wild grasses can grow and, and stuff like that. And that's an area that cattle can actually uh, can feed from. So in many ways, when a when an animal is raised with the environment, you know, in conjunction with the planet, it's one of the most environmental processes you could have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's really cool, actually, about pigs, is you can put pigs on piece of land that has tree stumps that you wouldn't be able to farm anyway. And actually, um, my good friend Dave Asprey taught me this. He says, see that land over there? This is on his farm. Uh, we would have to get bobcats and arborists come in to try and take care of these stumps. But guess what? The pigs do it. They use their noses to root everything up. So there you go. You're, you're basically leveling out that land and making it more conducive to agriculture because of all the nutrients that are going in the ground from actually their their poop, believe it or not. And then, then it's going to be usable, which is pretty cool. The other thing is I'm really conscious about being a conscious consumer. And at the end of the day, that's always my desire for each and every one of you listening. It's to be a more conscious consumer with your skincare routine, with your rejuvenation that you might do in the clinic, with what you eat. And I would also make the question that when we're purchasing foods that are, say, crackers or snack foods or different carbohydrate types of foods, they're actually what's making up a majority of your grocery bill. I actually spend less money focusing more on just getting meat and uh, animal products. And when I go out to a restaurant, I was actually at my favorite Italian restaurant the other day, you know, oh, you know, should we get a pizza? I'm like, what am I going to be getting from that pizza? I'm just going to be getting a whole bunch of gluten and cheese. I'm going to get the carnivore dish. So it's got the lamb, it's got the sausage and some other types of meat too, because that's actually going to be giving my body nutrients. And people don't always think about that. But when you're shopping, make sure you're paying for actually nutrients and not just, you know, a treat or something that's like a filler food. And think about this for your kids too. One of the first foods that people give babies is actually heavily starch carbohydrate foods, even before they have their molars. And then the baby actually doesn't even have the, the uh, enzymes in their mouth to even break down those starches. So it's, it's interesting when you look at sort of how we're kind of being told to eat, which is right now you're going to be eating grasshoppers. I don't know what nutrition grasshoppers are going to give me very unappetizing to me. Like just think about the spraying and the agricultural practices for that. I'd much rather go down the street and get my eggs from farmer Ben or my couple girlfriends that have their own chicken coops and grow my own herbs in, in the garden. Um, you know, hunting, that's kind of like a whole other thing that some people might not want to be doing, but some people do it kind of depends on your culture and all of that. But then, yeah, I mean, those, those hunters, they're using the skins, they're using them as rugs in their homes. They're using every single part of that. The other thing that I love to do is actually do kind of like a cow share where you find a local butcher and you kind of go in on like half a cow and then you put that in your freezer. It's actually more economical to do it that way too. Sardines I also find are really affordable, high protein um, type of snack. So for about $3, you're getting about 16 grams of protein and then put a little pluck on that. Make sure that those sardines are in spring water instead of oil that could be rancid. Um, and then sardine fillets are great too. So I'll just literally eat that straight out of the tin with a little bit of pluck on top. And uh, it's a great snack to just keep me fueled up. And 
the, the skin stuff with having high protein is great, but I also want to talk about the body composition. We were talking before recording here. My body composition is completely different. When you first met me in 2018, yeah, I was in good shape. I was personal training twice a week, deadlifting 170 pounds, glute bridging 325, but I was kind of puffy and I actually feel like I look younger now. And now it's more swimming, it's more pickleball, it's high protein diet. I am lean as anything, like a four six pack going on. My arms are toned. I've lost a lot of weight actually on my thighs and my backside area. It's just when you're giving your body nutrients, it's going to, it's going to go to work and then reducing veggies that maybe are inflammatory uh, say, for example, like collard greens or nightshades, those are actually going to be pulling your nutrients, even though, you know, somewhere, some, someone along the line told you that those are good to have and that you need all these grains in your diet. I mean, those are paid for by the, by big egg. So it's just about having an awareness. So I love what you're doing with the pluck organ based meat seasoning products as a really easy way to get the benefits from various organ meat. You're also using, using a great part of the animal. I'll eat the muscle. Thank you very much. And then I'll put the, uh, your pluck seasoning on whatever I'm preparing, make rice a little bit more tasty as well. So James, do you have any closing words for us today? Wow. Well, uh, just a comment on the uh, bill saving aspect, because because you know it is it is kind of disheartening that to be healthy sometimes it does feel like you have to be wealthy. I think I think particularly if you're watching Instagram, most influencers that are pushing certain agendas, they're pushing very expensive things, you know. And and so I I I, I think I, I hope that people leave this talk just knowing not only what you just said about you know getting. Um, cow shares, that's an extremely great way to shave money. But another thing is just eating whole animals. So so the same grass fed cow, 100% grass fed cow that you see in your local health food store that's selling, you know, $24 a ribeye, a pound for a ribeye. Well, that same cow has a heart that has a lung, uh, like a tongue has a liver has a kidney. And those parts of the animal are can range from $4 to $8 a pound. I mean, they're so they're, they're half to even a third of the price of the muscle meat. So you, you can right away just immediately save money by eating other parts of the animal, um, that, that aren't necessarily, uh, in the meat aisle, they might be in the freezer aisle. So you just have to kind of look a little further or ask your butcher for them. Sometimes, depending on where you get your products too, they'll even just give them to you. If, if it's a place where they're just throwing them out, they'll give them to you. So always worth asking. Um, and then it becomes about, well, how do I prepare it? And there's so many different ways to ease into organ meats. You can go to our website at eatpluck.com. We have a recipe section. We have lots of ways to eat these organ meats. Um, I've done, I, I, we may have even talked about it in our previous podcast. I can't not remember, but I've definitely talked about it on lots of podcasts about how to ease into eating organ meats and do it really, really easily, like truly, um, and do it so it's not overwhelming. But the more that we can get these organ meats into our diet, what's beautiful is not only do you get the benefits of the micronutrients, but there's something else that happens that's little talked about, which is our, our palate starts to change. And, and that's something that's really important is people, a lot of times when you talk about real natural food, people's first reactions, particularly around organ meats, they go, ew, they'll make that ew, ew, ew face. And I'm like, well, but have you actually eaten them? And they're like, no, I never have, but that's just ew. And I'm like, okay, isn't that interesting? But if I put like a bunch of desserts in front of you that you've never eaten, I guarantee you're not going to make that face. You're going to be like, oh, what's that? Right? So one's leaning in and one's leaning away. And, and, and how we can tr help to support our shift, whether it's mentally or physically in the palate, is one thing is take the oomph away, like remove this kind of like energy around like, oh, food is so amazing or ooh, food is so gross. It's like, no, food is just food. You don't need to put this hierarchy on it. Like we, we should love each other, not necessarily love our meal. Like you can like your meal, but leave the love and the emphasis, the de-emphasis or the extreme emphasis towards human interaction in my judgment, right? And then the second thing 
is to start to slowly introduce these flavors into your diet. Pluck is a great entry point, but also just like gently kind of easing, you know, these kind of umami flavors into your diet will start to change your palate. And as you remove these other flavors, like the sweets, you know, the things that are extremely sweet, that will also start to recalibrate your palate. And once you recalibrate your palate, you'll find that you're actually completely more open to new foods. Like suddenly, like the the true taste of food just becomes trans like apparent. Like strawberries, you you truly taste the sweetness of a strawberry versus them tasting plain. You truly taste the the deep flavors of these these foods, like the meats, these, these parts of the animals, you start to taste it like the tongue, for example, the tongue is not only more nutritious than muscle meat, but it's also got a deeper flavor. Like it's got a fuller flavor. So in many ways it's better tasting and more nutritious and it's cheaper and it's the tongue. You just got to get over the part of how to cook it and you can find how to cook it on eatpluck.com. I love it. Yes. And we'll share the, the links for all the ways that you can find uh, James's cookbooks as well in the show notes too. And yeah, the palette starting to change. This is a very real thing. When I decided, you know what, I'm going to give this high protein a go. I feel like I need more protein. I'd love to have more lean muscle and more energy and everything else started to follow the way my skin looked, my energy, my sleep. Every month, I don't even have PMS symptoms. I kid you not. I don't even have cramps. It's like so well balanced because when you're getting the nutrients that you need, your operating systems are going to work better. And radiance, according to Ayurveda, is the electromagnetic projection of your body, mind, spirit, energy. The radiant body is the 10th body. So it's the quality of how you're operating. And just uh, one final tip here. I personally love pâtés. It's such a great way for me to get uh, different organs into my diet as well. A little bit more expensive. So yes, you could make it your own as well. And just encourage you all to make the shift with how you fuel yourselves, with how you fuel your families, to move away from a ton of grains, a ton of carbs, to more protein. Having just like most of your plate high protein, nutrient dense. Your kids are probably going to be picky eaters, pick less picky eaters too, because of the palate change that you mentioned. They're not going to be craving those carb carbohydrates and the sugars that come with that. And kids love pluck too. It's fun. It makes, you know, something that could be like rice and super simple instead of just salt and butter, add a little bit of pluck on there too. And you have just a fantastic array of seasonings, like your original, your taco seasonings, your, um, different sort of like citrus ones. And so I actually recommend getting um, many different kinds of the pluck seasonings and just kind of mixing it up with your food. And it's going to kind of make the the food that you're eating more nutritious, but also kind of mix up that flavor, flavor profile as well. Well, thank you yeah, so much. Thanks so much, James, for being here on the School of Radiance podcast. Head on over to the school of radiance.com, go to the biohacking page. And you'll see that there's a promo code Rachel for the Eat Pluck products. And be sure to follow James Barry on social media. I'll be able, I'll be sure to share those handles in the description of the, of the show here. And just make good choices, everybody. To look and feel your best, it's it's an inside job. And it comes down to listening to your body. How much of this, what, what type of this makes you feel better? lean into that. And it might be contrary to what you're hearing people around you or in the media talking about. But at the end of the day, what my good friend Dave Asprey says with his danger coffee branding, which I'm glad you mentioned, is we're going to be able to make better decisions in life. The more clear we are and the more nutrients we have with our minerals and, and all of that and protein, 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 huge fan of protein. All right, everybody have a beautiful high vibe, a radiant rest of your day. And I will see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.